So one of the things that I am tired of hearing from believers is only God can judge me. And it's right, honey, he will judge you. <laughs> but also on the flip side of that is this idea of like Christians arguing about non-salvation things, things that ultimately at the end of the day, do they really matter? So we're going to jump into back into Romans. We're almost done Romans. Also, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me in Romans. I don't know why I chose this to be the first book. It's such a heavy book, but here we are. Let me set my 10 minute timer and give myself some guidelines. We're jumping into Romans 14. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to, to quarrel over opinions. So those who are weak in faith, bring them in, like welcome them into your space. But don't do it so you can prove a point or argue them down, right? One person believes he may eat anything while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than the other. We're talking about the Sabbath here. One person keeps the Sabbath while another esteems all days alike. One person sees all days as similar. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. That's where the whole idea of the personal conviction. So we spend a lot of time arguing. And here's what I like to tell people. Your personal conviction could be connected to your personal call on your life. And so even with parenting, we will look at other parents and judge how they're parenting their kids. Like maybe one parent, they let their kids watch a lot of TV. you like, nope, we can't do that. But one example a friend of mine told me is that their kid, they let their kid watch all these movies. The kid grows up to be a movie producer, right? Um, just the different things. So just think about that. Like your personal conviction, if it's not a salvation issue, your personal conviction could be tied to your calling. So yes, your friend may be able to go into certain spaces, but you cannot because your calling requires you to be your, to your mind to be kept in a certain way. I hope that makes sense. But whatever it is, it, sh it says that we should be fully convinced in our own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in the honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. None of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's for this, this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord both over the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. And then here it is for it is written as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Every tongue shall confess to God. And so a lot of people will use this and they make t-shirts and stuff. Only God can judge me. Now, first of all, let me correct that. As believers, we are to hold each other accountable. We are to hold each other to this book and this Bible. And so if a believer comes, like we confuse judgment with accountability. These are two different things. And so what you have is people putting on their Instagram page, to God be the honor, uh, only God can judge me. And then they got half naked women all over their page. They're like, you know what I'm saying? There's all these things. It's like, okay, this is not, this is not giving fruit of the spirit, right? And so those are issues that should be talked about. Those are issues that when you are living in community, your community is helping you on the sanctification journey and they cannot help you on the sanctification journey if only God can judge you, okay? Now, yes, only God can judge you, but please believe that God will judge you and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So if you are saying only God can judge me and you over here living a life of sin, please know, yes, God will judge you, okay? <clears throat> so don't say that out of pride. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God, okay? Do not cause another to stumble. This is a good life principle that I live my life by. Let's dig in. Verse 13, therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. This is how I determine a lot of what I'll do. Let me keep reading first. I know and I am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it is unclean. Anyone who's, con who's convinced that it is unclean, then it would be wrong of them to then go <coughs> and still do it if they believe it's unclean. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love by what you eat. Do not destroy the, the one for whom Christ died. Do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
All right, so going back up here to never put a stumbling block. This is 13. Never put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. This is like, so for instance, certain denominations believe you shouldn't drink if you're a pastor or leadership or whatever. Um, in certain cultures, there's nothing wrong with drinking. And so the way that I have always looked at this is if there's anything that I am doing, if it is going to cause a stumbling block to someone else, if they're going to think, and here's what I mean by stumbling block. If them seeing me and knowing that I'm serious about my faith, if them seeing me do something, I am disciplined enough. I'm serious, serious enough about people, people knowing the love of Jesus Christ and experiencing this life of freedom that I will not do it with them there. I will not do it in public. I will. And, it, and if it's someone close to me and they're like, man, I saw my dad always being drunk or I saw my spouse die of alcoholism. I'm like, you know what? A drink is not worth it to me. Your soul is way more worth it. And so I wish as Christians, we would take this approach more than doing all this fussing and arguing. Now, whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes peace and, and for mutual upbuilding. I love that peace and mutual upbuilding. That should be the goal, not to prove that someone's right or wrong, that we should keep the Sabbath. No peace and mutual upbuilding. Do not for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. This is where it's like, you may be free to do it. And this is the issue too with um, celebrity uh, pastors and stuff, maybe doing things on the internet that people are not ready for. They're not necessarily sinning, but the people not ready, okay? The faith that you have keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. Faith glorifies God and a lack of it dishonors him is what I wrote. And that's the lens we have to look through. Okay. And so in this day and age where, yes, I love that we're more free. We can wear whatever we want to church. A lot of times we, you know, people just, they're letting their hair down and I'm thankful for it because I'm not the type that's like super religious. And we're going, let me say, I'm not, let me not say I'm not super religious because we, we get that out of context too, because I do read my Bible regularly and all these things. There's, that's not fully a negative thing. But what I'm trying to say is in a time where we have ultimate freedom and we can really just do whatever we want, there's really a lack of honor. If we being real, there's a lack of honor of the pulpit. There's a lack of honor of the sanctuary. There's a lack of honor of the church as a body. All of these things. Yes, we can do. We're walking in our freedom. That's great. But as you embrace your freedom, I want to challenge you, especially if you are a stronger Christian, as Paul is talking about, it is now your job to make sure the weaker Christian is not stumbling, right? So you're, you, maybe you're a married man and you are, you know, wanting to go or, or married, let's say women. I, I'm assuming a lot of women watch this. Maybe you're a married woman and you can go do certain things. You can go to certain places, but you have this new married woman with you. You shouldn't do it. If it's going to cause her to stumble, you shouldn't do it. How many of us are willing to make the sacrifice so that other people can see the hand of Christ on their life? The question, is there a petty judgment you have let come between you and a fellow person in Christ? Is there something that you have just like allowed to push you away? Or is there something that you in your own life are doing that you need to tighten it, you know, tighten that thing up so that you are not leading others astray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. Lord, we thank you for just the wisdom of your word. I pray that we would honor it. I pray that we would continue to meet together. I pray that we would just hold it to, to, to just the honor that it is worthy of. God, I pray that you would continue to guide our actions. And Lord, if there's something that we're doing that is causing others to stumble, would you help us with that? And for the spirit of pride, Lord, that is behind the only God can judge me, we just cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone watching this and they have not been held accountable, God, or maybe they ran from accountability thinking that somebody was trying to hurt them, but really they were trying to help them. I pray, Lord, that they would just have the humility, Lord, to just uh, reconcile that relationship, Lord, and that they would learn from that accountability. Lord, we love you. We praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. I will see you tomorrow.